ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम welcome back so so far we have seen the you know the importance of power electronics by looking at some examples which are very close to us we saw an example of a laboratory power supply and then we saw a computer power supply which actually i took out from a desktop computer and i showed you that this power supply is actually meant to cater various voltage levels and various power levels in the various sections of the computer so the computer is of course a very complex machinery and there are a lot of circuits inside which need different levels of voltage and power so we saw that a typical power electronic system is required a complex power electronic system would be required but i actually gave you an idea that how such reduction in the voltage levels and how a change from ac to dc form of electricity can be achieved by using a very simple power electronic circuit which we studied as a rectifier we took the example of a diode based rectifier first and it gave us you know after all the filtering and all the other explanation it explained to us that how we can get a nice and constant dc voltage at the output terminals which we described as xy of such a rectifier system but there is an issue that we observed that there was no way to change this voltage there is no way to control this voltage across terminals x and y if diodes are used in the rectifier so the only thing if you want to change the voltage across terminals x and y the only thing perhaps you can do is to change the input ac voltage itself only that's all you can do but then i introduced a fictitious imaginary device a three terminal device i said that it has terminals 1 and 2 in the same way as a diode but it also has an added third terminal unless and until we activate the third terminal my device does not conduct this fictitious device does not conduct even though it may be forward biased so basically what i'm saying is that it has the ability this imaginary device has the ability to block the forward voltage it's not like a diode which will start conducting the moment it is forward biased now let us move ahead from the example of the rectifier okay and let's now say that instead of a uh, ac voltage which is available to us let's say when we are in a remote place where we are generating a uh, power supply we are we are generating power with batteries now we all know that the batteries will give you a dc supply so it will give you a dc voltage and when you apply a load to it then you will get actually we we extracting the dc current through it so it's basically a dc supply now suppose you have a dc supply which is either through batteries or it could be through dc generators or it could be through some other ways like for example fuel cells fuel cells are you know as you know they, they actually are uh, the the currently the front running candidates for being used as uh, renewable energy sources and uh, this could be actually a solar photovoltaic source they are all they all give out dc voltage in fact even a wind energy source they are all used with rectifiers so they also give a dc source so let's say we are in a place we have where we have the primary source of power as dc so we have the dc which is being produced but we want to achieve we want to use it in some processes in some applications which need another level of dc voltage what do we do so one very simple way of looking at it is by way of this example so let's say if we have something like 48 volts which is being produced by the battery or the dc generator and i just want to get 24 volts then what can i do so let me just draw this particular diagram so this is the vdc which i am denoting the you know my primary uh, supply which is of the dc form in this case 
and let us say it is not a regulated power supply it's a raw power supply okay so it maybe you know it's just whatever the source is giving out it is just what is reflected here there is no regulation uh, closed loop regulation associated with it okay now let me just put a simple switch here and let me just denote at the output a load let's say for again for simplicity for convenience of understanding and explanation let's say that this is a pure r load resistive load now this switch that we see is turned on and turned off continuously so basically the switch has these kinds of pulses which are applied to its control terminal by the way this switch is again a controllable switch a three terminal device okay the one the kind of one that we assumed this is the same three terminal device and what we see here are the control pulses applied to the terminal 3 of this device now when that happens assuming that there are no losses there are no other issues the device is very ideal and so on and everything else is ideal in the circuit what we can see at the output is that when the switch is on then the vdc will appear at the output across the load and when the switch is open okay that this path is broken so this load cannot see the voltage at all so you actually get a zero there so what you get at the output is basically these kinds of pulses these kinds of output voltage pulses which are as you can see in the shape in the appearance they are same as the control pulses applied to the switch or the switching device the controllable device now you can see that by changing the time for which these pulses are applied to the controllable device the switch so i have just put these arrows just to say that this right side boundary it can be shifted it can be shifted actually to this side or to this side so as that happens so as you shift on to this side you extend the boundary you stretch the boundary of the control pulses what you will see is that here these pulses will also stretch out while if you move to the left side you will find that they will shrink in so what is the result of this now if i was to look at the overall result of doing this what i observe is that if i was to denote the average of this as the dc voltage content of the output i can see that by stretching the control pulses right or left i am able to move my average value of vo up or down vo is the voltage across the load v load or vo we can just denote it the way we like so that is what is going to happen so this is a very simple example now if i want to get for a 48 volts dc voltage i want to get a 24 volts output i can see that the control pulses should actually be half of this duration if they are exactly half of this we will get about 24 volts here but the problem is that with this circuit how do we get a voltage which is more than 48 volts across the load is it possible to get a voltage which is output voltage vo which will be more than the applied 48 volts the answer is with this circuit no but power electronics also gives you a way to do that so what we use is basically in this circuit we modify this configuration and as we will see in the course that we apply certain energy storing elements like inductors and we use 
the mechanism of storing the energy into the inductor and then releasing it. Storing the energy into the inductor and then releasing it. More like a spring action. Compress, release, press, release. And you will see that this action leads to the boosting of the input voltage. So, you actually are able to get a voltage which is much higher than what you have the input. But just to understand the very basic example of power electronics for this kind of a situation where you have a DC input or the DC power as the primary source, how do you actually get a variable output voltage is this example that I have given. And mind you that regulation problem which I explained with the help of a rectifier is equally valid here because I can say sense this output voltage as before, I can compare it with a reference and based on the error I get from what I want VO to be and what I am actually getting from that difference, I can always modify, I can always manipulate and control the pulse to the terminal 3 of the switch shown here. So, this is an example where you can see that from a given from a DC source how you get variable levels of DC, how you get a different level of DC voltage and how you can control this voltage. Okay, now, talking about the DC source, now there are several applications where it is desirable to have a DC source and then manipulate it and then get the kind of power that you need to supply your load. Now, one example of this is in AC drives, AC motor drives. Now, we all are aware of the electric machines. We have the two types, the DC machines and the AC machines. In the DC machines also, we have DC generators and we have DC motors. And this motor works when you apply a DC supply. And to change the speed of a DC motor, so suppose your application is such that you wish to change the speed of you know of, the, of your motor, you change the voltage supply, you change the DC voltage supply applied to the armature of the motor, DC motor. Now, when you go to the AC motor and you want to actually control this, uh, the motor, so you apply AC and AC as you know is uh, an alternating current waveform, AC waveform, you apply to the AC motors. Now, one way of controlling let us say the speed of these AC motors is just by changing the voltage. But the problem with the, these AC motors is that if you just change the voltage levels, but you do not change the frequency of the voltage supply that you are applying to the motor, then you actually are running the risk of saturating the core which makes up the, of the machine. Therefore, you must have heard, at least some of you must have heard about what is called a V by F control, where the voltage applied to the AC motor windings to a stator and its ratio with the frequency. So, the voltage RMS voltage applied to the three phase stator of an AC motor to the frequency of this voltage supply that is always kept a constant. Now, this basically means that we need a mechanism that given a DC supply primary DC source, we want to create a AC supply whose RMS voltage we can vary and whose frequency also we can vary in such a way that the RMS voltage to the frequency ratio remains constant. Now, I will just show you with the example a very again we will take the layout the layman's approach, we will not talk about very specific uh, you know terms very uh, technical involved technical terms in this just for understanding we will come to these things slowly in due course. So, one of the uh, uh, I will just give you the example how this is done. So, let me just start with a DC source and let us say that I have that three terminal device with all the ideal assumption ok and I show it is control terminals with this. As you can see, there is a line with a small spec segment with a bubble. Like this. And I just apply it to this bridge which I have formed 
of these of these special devices, the controllable devices. These are different from diodes, mind you, as I told you. It has got a third terminal which can control, which can control precisely when these devices will start conducting and when they will stop conducting the current. The load is connected here. So let's say here this is the output and I just mark this as A and B and let's say that this is going here and let's say that this is going to one of the phases of my AC motor, let's say. So let me just call this as the first as phase let's say A of my three phase AC motor. Now of course there are three phases in the AC motor, uh, there are single phase motors as well but let us talk about three phase AC motors right now. So basically what we need is we need to create another two phases here. But for now let us assume that we are just talking about one of the phases of the three phase AC motor. Now what will happen? Now let us say we just have So let me just mark these devices as 1, 2, 3, 4 and let us call the control pulses to these various devices which are applied to the various terminals as G1 and G4 and G2 and G3. Okay, so there are control pulses to these two pairs that I want to draw and show you. So let us say these are the control pulses which are given to the control terminals of devices 1 and 4 and let us say these are the pulses which are given to the devices 2 and 3. Now when this happens, when you apply these kinds of control pulses to the various devices, what would you observe? At or across terminals A and B which is supplying power to the one of the phases of the stator windings of the AC motor. What kind of waveform we will get? So we will see that if we apply this waveform, uh, let me just draw another. So I will basically get a waveform of this type, okay, which is shown with a black, black color and it is uh, so assuming that we are taking all precautions to keep symmetry between the various waveforms. So this is what is going to be the output. And we can just check this here, so if this voltage is VDC that we have applied, then when the devices 1 and 4 will be applied the control pulse and they will be conducting, we will find that uh, VDC will appear across terminals A and B directly and that is why this level VDC will appear here. And when devices 2 and 3 will be applied the control pulses and then when they will conduct 1 and 2 and 1 and 4 are not conducting at that time as you can see then at that time a minus VDC will appear across terminals A and B. This can be very easily verified by assuming the ideal assumptions we have made for the special device. We have assumed that there are no drops, there are no losses in these devices. So you will get this negative side. So like this, this will repeat and you will get this square wave, it is not sinusoidal but it is an AC nevertheless, positive, negative, positive, negative. Now if I can play with the frequency, if I can bring these pulses, control pulses shown with green and red, if I can bring them closer or if I can take them away, I can play with the frequency. So by controlling their width of these pulses, I can play with the RMS output voltage and by bringing them together or away, I can play with the frequency. So in effect, this kind of a system 
it actually gives me starting from a DC voltage it is able to give me an AC output voltage whose RMS voltage I can control and whose frequency I can control. Such a power electronic system or circuit is called a DC to AC converter or simply an inverter and has several applications. Now let me just give you the last uh, you know last example which will kind of complete this family of it will exhaust all the permutations and combinations of the power conversion. So, this one is actually if we have a primary source of electricity as an, as an AC source. So, AC source is the primary form of electricity and we are trying to get another uh, level of AC voltage at the output then we call it as an AC voltage controller. And I will just explain to you how this works. So, just like we have seen the examples of earlier the AC to DC rectifier, the DC to DC you know converter and the DC to AC converter. Now, let me just draw an AC to AC converter. So, first of all our controllable device the special device which I introduced calling the two terminals the regular terminals as, as 1 and 2 before between which the currents would flow and a third terminal which is marked as 3 and it is this terminal which is called the control terminal and it is to this terminal we apply the control signal and that is when the device this device starts to begins to operate begins to conduct. We assume that this device is capable of withstanding a large negative voltage between terminals 1 and 2. We also assumed that the resistance offered by this device as the current flows from 1 to 2 terminal 1 to 2 is 0. So, we are just considered an ideal device and also we assume that the current cannot flow from terminal 2 to 1 it can just flow from 1 to 2. So, it is a uni directional device. Now, let us say that we have this kind of device with us and we connect it in the following manner. So, let us say we have this primary form the primary form of power which is the AC in this case and let us say we are taking it from the 230 volts 50 hertz you know the main supply that we get very commonly from the wall socket. And what I do is that let us say in one of the lines let us say in the top lines I connect this special device I use two of these and the way I connect them is anti parallel. So, what I have here is this device this is terminal 1 this is terminal 2 and this is terminal 3 and the other branch that we have made here let us say this device is again put but now it is the other way around. So, here 2 is basically connected here terminal 1 is here. So, this device has, as you can see has been reversed in the direction in which it can conduct and it has again the terminal 3 let me call it as 3 dash the control terminal and these are connected here terminals 2 and 1 of the two of these controllable devices they are connected and let me just put some load that I want to drive which has a need for a variable AC supply to be applied across it. So, it is that load for simplicity for now just assume that this is just a simple R load simple R load. Now, such an example where you would need a variable AC supply to be applied to a load could be for example, a room heater or it could be a dimmer you know where the lights for example, on the on a, on a theater on a stage people try to dim it or maybe, maybe make it bright. So, they apply a variable AC to it these are some there are many examples of this. So, basically 
because we will see later because this supply is going to be full of harmonics. So, basically we try to operate only crude type of AC loads with it not very sophisticated because otherwise they will have to take all the harmonics and their life would reduce. Okay, so, such is the situation you know what I have shown here uh, in this diagram. So, this is my diagram now let us see what happens how this would work and what we will get across the load. Are we really going to get a variable AC supply across the load that we have actually started you know uh, that was our basically our objective. Okay. Now, when the AC supply on the input side is positive like this, we will find that the top device okay, will have a forward bias across terminals 1 and 2. When the input AC supply is negative, at that time the bottom device Okay, that is going to be forward biased, which means that during the positive half of the AC cycle that we are applying as input, the top device is ready to conduct and when the voltage applied, the AC supply voltage the input is negative, during the negative half the bottom device is ready to, to conduct, is ready to conduct. But as I told you, I must supply a control signal to the corresponding control terminals 3 and 3 dash. Now, let us look at this with the help of the waveforms. So, what I have drawn is the input AC supply, this is the input AC voltage which is having 50 hertz or 50 hertz which is applied. Now, as I told you just now, when the AC input is positive during the positive half, the top device is ready to conduct. Now, let us assume that at is, it is at this point okay, where I give the control pulse to the terminal 3. Now, what will happen as far as the load is concerned, what will it observe? It will observe the corresponding part of the input AC supply voltage. Okay? So, what will, what will it see? Let me just draw it. This is typically what it will see. Now, let us move on to the next half which is the negative half of the input supply voltage, AC supply voltage. Now, by symmetry, let us say approximately here is where I give the control pulse to terminal 3 dash. So, if you look at the previous, you know, our diagram here. So, I gave the, during the positive half, I applied the pulse to 3 and now I am saying I will apply the pulse to 3 dash when the input supply voltage is negative. So, when I do that, now this device will conduct, the lower the bottom device will conduct and what will the load see? What voltage will appear across the load? It will be something like this. Now, I again in the next half cycle which is a positive half cycle, I again give the control pulse to terminal 3 at this point and I again get this kind of voltage across the load. So, if you see carefully this waveform, the green waveform and if I could maybe make it a little dark and also a bit and also continuous, then what we observe is that in this kind of circuit which we are calling as an AC voltage controller, AC to AC but AC of one level to the AC 
of another level. Okay, so what we mean by this is that if you see this green waveform, the green waveform is, as you can see, both positive and negative, so it is AC. But if you do a, a root mean square, if you try to find out the root mean square value of the AC voltage, which is in green, you will find that, that if I just say, because it is appearing at the output across the load, if I just denote it by VO, so VO RMS is going to be much less than or less than the input supply RMS voltage. Now, it is very easy to see that as we move this point at which I am triggering or I am con controlling the, the corresponding devices into conduction, if I just move these, if I shift these points left or right, I am going to vary, I will be able to vary the RMS voltage that appears across the load. So, this is how I am going to control the voltage that will come across the load. So, uh, what would be the typically what should be the control point or what should be the trigger point to the control pearls or to the control terminal if I want to get the maximum RMS output voltage across the load? The answer is that I should make this almost here, 0. So, there should be no delay from this point up to the point I trigger the control terminal. Likewise here, so it should actually move all the way up to this point. This point it should move all the way here. And as I need less and less RMS voltage at the output across the load, I can keep on going on the right side. And you can see that if actually we were to trigger at this point, particularly for an ideal resistive case, you will find that we will actually end up with a zero voltage across the load. Now, this is a principle which is very, very commonly used in today's fan regulators. So, I will just show you one fan regulator, today uh, a, a modern fan regulator which is used in almost all the households. Uh, okay, so, you can see this, uh, there, is a, there is a knob here which you can move and it has all these gradations 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And 5 which is the maximum. So, what it does is now inside this I now what I want to do is I am just trying to apply a different RMS AC voltage to the fan. That is what I am doing with this regulator. Now, in the earlier ones in the earlier regulators that we used the big ones we were just using a resistive potential divider system. And as I probably mentioned in one of my earlier lectures, you actually end up really dissipating a lot of power when we use that kind of an arrangement to control the speed of the fan. But now these modern fan speed regulators, they have nothing but as you can guess now from the various things which I am saying that it is going to have something like uh, you know this arrangement inside. So, if you see here there is a, this arrangement of this very special three terminal device which is connected in a specific way and later on I will tell you that this is called this device is called a triac, it is called a triac and we will see what is its structure but the principle is going to be somewhat what I have already told you. This is hot. So, basically our Fan regulator, modern fan regulator today, it actually uses a circuit like this one, which is shown here, here, which is shown here, and just by wearing this knob, you are basically controlling the that delay at which you are triggering the control terminals, the various control terminals. So you can see that if you are at zero, your delay is maximum. You have taken it all the way to the right side at 180 degree point. Okay? And when you want to increase the speed, you try to bring that control point, the trigger point towards the left, more left, then you go to 2, more left, then you further increase the output AC RMS voltage, 
you further increase and this is the maximum you can get. So actually here you are applying the full blast of the input voltage across the fan. Having reviewed the AC voltage controllers and all the other basic types of power electronic converters, from the next time we will now get a bit formal and look at some other details of power electronic systems. I thank you for your attention.